It's time to run down the DC Comics solicitations for November of 2022. I know I'm a little bit late, but we're here to talk about all the things coming out of DC Comics. We're specifically going to hit on them doubling down on stupid. I would like to say only DC Comics could be this stupid, but this is a Marvel move too. It's just something you've got to get used to, but the sheer insanity of what these people will absolutely keep going with, even though it's failed month after month after month, it's just... Words don't describe just how stupid DC Comics could be from time to time. We're also going to talk about DC Comics by the numbers. And if you're a DC Comics head and you like to buy DC Comics in Batman, it's time to take out a loan because DC Comics are absolutely taking it right out of your wallet in November of 2022. It is a five-week release month. So there's a bunch of one-shots and celebrations and $8 comic books and $9 comic books. DC Comics are absolutely taking it out of your you-know-what. Marvel Comics are just looking like a better publisher every single month. When it comes to just the prices themselves, I can't believe the company that was just holding the line at $3.99 just a few years ago has gone this far afield at this point. We're also going to run down the entire DC Comics solicitations, and my lock of the month is back on. I heard the feedback, and it's back in play. You will get it this month. Now let's talk about the sheer insanity of DC Comics in November of 2022. To celebrate Nubia's 50th anniversary, DC is once again changing her status quo by having her join one of the most powerful teams in the DC universe. Nubia and the Justice League Special Number 1 is a 48-page one-shot exploring the character's reintegration in a man's world as she learns how to work with various members of the JLA. Nubia and the Justice League Special Number 1 is written by Becky Cluden, Michael W. Conrad, and Stephanie Williams. First off, I have no idea why they're celebrating the 50th anniversary of Nubia, a character that, quite frankly, has been around for a while but has little to no impact on the greater DC Comics universe. Blue Beetle is over 80 years old. They've never celebrated that character. Hawkman, over 60 years old. They did not celebrate his 60th anniversary. The Adam, Ray Palmer, also over 60 years old. They never celebrated that character, and the list goes on and on of more important characters in the annals of DC Comics history that they didn't celebrate with the 60th or 50th anniversary special, but somehow Nubia gets the 50th anniversary special treatment. This is just par for the course as far as the insanity when it comes to DC Comics and the creative talents associated with Wonder Woman, Nubia, and anything Wonder Woman related. Vita Ayala, Stephanie Williams, Michael Conrad, Becky Cluden, Stephanie Phillips, the sales of Wonder Woman associated comic books under these creators is absolutely abysmal. Let's go back to March of 2022. Trial of the Amazon's number one, debuting at number 57. This is absolutely jaw-dropping stuff. You can't imagine that it could be much worse. Wonder Woman 785, already outside the top 100. Trial of the Amazon's Wonder Girl number one, outside the top 100, debuting. Nubia and the Amazons, the precursor to Trial of the Amazons, down at number 146 in April. Things got somewhat better. Wonder Woman, Historia, the Amazons, I guess before people realized Phil Jimenez wasn't going to be illustrating this comic book, locks in at number 66. Child of the Amazons, Wonder Girl jumps up to number 89. Wonder Woman actually gets into the top 100. That won't happen again. And Child of the Amazons, number two, drops out of the top 100 to 115. In May, Nubia Coronation Special, number one, another number one issue, debuting at number 95, absolute insanity. Wonder Woman once again dropping outside the top 100. In June, it only gets worse. Nubia, Queen of the Amazons, number one, debuts at 130. Wonder Woman drops to number 142. In July, Wonder Woman, 130. Artemis Wanted, another number one comic book, 160. Nubia, Queen of the Amazons, down to 175. And Wonder Woman Evolution, doesn't even make the top 200. The numbers speak for themselves. The creators they have on Wonder Woman right now are absolutely putrid. No one is supporting the comic books, including the retailers. They have no faith in anything that DC Comics is doing with the characters. And DC doesn't just know this from July. The final order cutoff is far earlier than that, and they get feedback from their customers. They've known for a long time nobody wants to support Wonder Woman as long as they have these terrible creators. Yet they keep doubling and tripling down on their stupidity and just throwing crap out there, just, I guess, hoping that maybe it'll get better. Thankfully, from what I've heard, people are asking questions about some of the failing projects at DC Comics, and I guarantee to you, Child of the Amazons, Anything Nubia related and Wonder Woman related is going to be talked about and why they can't get this right. To continue down the road, 
with these creators, it's basically unforgivable at this point. At some point, leadership, management, your business acumen has to kick in and you say, I can't keep doing this because failure is not an option. I have to do something to rescue the character. One woman is far too important to be treated like this. Now let's talk about DC Comics by the numbers. And my goodness, DC are going to wear you out this month. If you are a comic book speculator and you need all the number one comic book issues from DC that month, well, I do want to say up front, I'm sorry. DC Comics are releasing in total 69 new comic books, 18 number one issues. 26% of all new comics are number one issues for a total of $105 or $5.83 on average. Let's look at Marvel Comics. Their average price was $4.71. DC Comics are absolutely overcharging their customers right now because the orders are in the tank. They probably can't afford at this point to not just take it out of your wallet because they've chased so many fans away. If you're a Batman fan, you're getting it the worst. If you like Batman and you have to have everything starring Bruce Wayne or a character calling themselves Batman, you're going to have 12 new comics. 17% of all new DC comics are going to start a Batman character. $54 in total or $4.50 on average. That number is brought down tremendously because there are two kids' Batman books that are $3 each, so that absolutely helps the average. Now let's look at Batman-related characters, the stuff that isn't Bruce Wayne or uh, Jace Fox or, or Batman Beyond. You know, your Nightwings, your Joker stuff, Harley Quinn, 18 new Batman-associated comic books, 26% of all new comic books from DC will star characters related to Batman for a total of $89 or $4.94 on average. That is absolute insanity. I can't believe what DC Comics are doing when it comes to the prices. If you're a Batman fan and you're a completionist, you want everything associated with Batman. And I'm being very generous with these. I'm not including like the DC versus Vampire stuff where there are Batman related characters and starring roles on those teams. 30 new Batman comics in November of 2022. 43% of all new comics will be starring Batman or a Batman related character or Batman on a team book for a total of $143 or $4.76 on average. What are Marvel Comics doing with their flagship character, Spider-Man? It's a much different conversation. Nine new comics for a total of $38 or $4.22 on average. If you're an X-Men fan and Marvel releasing too many X-Men comics, $63 in total, $4.20 on average. Batman fan, $143, $4.76 on average. Just it's mind-blowing stuff. I can't believe that they're doing this. If you're a Superman fan, they're going to take it easy on you because you're only getting five new Superman comic books. 7% of all new DC comics are Superman-related. $29 in total or $5.80 on average. That number is definitely bumped up because there is a $10 Superman comic book in there. Wonder Woman fans have it the best. Only two new Wonder Woman comics. 3% of all new comics are starring Wonder Woman. $11 total or $5.50 on average. That's because that Nubia special with the Justice League is $6. Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths, a little bit more this month. Seven new Dark Crisis and Dark Crisis tie-in books. 10% of all new comics are Dark Crisis related for a total of $36 or $5.14 on average. DC comic sales are in the gutter. People don't have a good impression of DC comics at this time. And I'm pretty sure, I'm almost 100% sure, it's not just the bad creative, it's the overwhelming price increases that I'm sure everyone noticed. If you looked at this and compared DC prices to Marvel like two or three years ago, they were essentially the same. But now DC comics are so more expensive than Marvel, it's not even funny. I don't know what they're going to do, but they better do something fast because their sales are tanking every single month. Now let's get into the actual solicitations themselves. This video normally takes a little bit more time, like 25, 30 minutes. Might want to grab yourself a nice refreshment, maybe an iced tea, a lemonade iced tea, or Arnold Palmer or something like that. Sit back, relax, and let's have some fun talking about the DC Comics releases in November of 2022. First up, Batman and the Joker, Deadly Duo, number one, Mark Silvestri, writing and illustrating. This is very exciting stuff. We've heard about this comic book in hushed tones for like eight years. They're finally delivering it. Thank goodness. I don't know that Batman and Joker teaming up makes a whole lot of sense, but hey, it could happen. It's certainly been done in comic books before, but it's never been done by Mark Silvestri. Mark Silvestri, not typically known as a DC guy. Obviously, he made his reputation over at Marvel Comics, was one of the Image 7, and has been the man behind Top Cow for several years now. So this is very exciting stuff. I hope this sells really, really well and sends a message loud and clear to DC Comics that people want good quality 
associated with DC Comics. Go out and pay a little bit extra. Bring in the best creators possible, and we'll support your books. Batman 129, Chip Zdorsky, Jorge Jimenez. Failsafe has countered every move Batman and the Justice League have attempted. Is the Dark Knight out of options on Earth? The best-selling failsafe arc continues in the backup. We travel back to the early years. Yeah, whatever. I personally don't read any of the backup stories in any of the comic books, but Chip Zdarsky on the main Batman title has been absolutely fantastic. I think he's done a wonderful job utilizing the superior talents of Jorge Menes to this point. I imagine that should continue. I think failsafe is a pretty cool character. I don't know about Zer and R coming back and all that stuff, but I'm along for the ride because I do like quality Batman, and I hope he keeps up. The momentum that he's built up in the first two issues, so I'm definitely on board for this one. Batman, One Bad Day, Mr. Freeze, Jerry Duggan, Mateo Scalera. $8 for a Jerry Duggan DC comic. Why do they keep bringing over Marvel Comics sloppy seconds to DC? And it's never like the good creators. Oh, I, they brought over Chips at our suite. I'll give them that. But it's always fucking Tinny Howard, Jerry Duggan, and Matthew Rosenberg. The new Golden Age, number one, Jeff John, Steve Lieber, Jerry Ordway, and Diego or too good? Uh, I messed that one up for certain. From the Justice Society of America to the Legion of Superheroes, the new golden age will unlock DC's epic and secret-ridden history of heroism, launching a new group of titles set firmly in the DC universe. It feels like this is a starting point, at least for something new, maybe a clean slate for DC Comics following Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths. I'll, I'll, I'll play their game, even though I don't believe it. This is also following in the aftermath of Flashpoint Beyond, which I've absolutely been enjoying. I've wondered, what's the importance of Flashpoint Beyond? Apparently, it's going to kick off and lead into this stuff. I'm definitely going to check this one out, and I'm excited for the Jeff John stuff. Speaking of which, we got more to talk about. Justice Society of America, number one, Jeff Johns, Michael Yaden, lock it up. We're going to get our lock of the month in real fast, real early this month. I've been looking forward to this for like six years now. We finally got it announced. The ongoing JSA series from Jeff Johns, once again, the world's first and greatest superheroes return, or do they? The long-lost hero from the JSA crashes into our era with that grave warning, but it's too late. A mysterious and malevolent enemy has invaded the entire history of the JSA, and the all-new team must come together to defeat it. But what deadly secrets does this messenger from beyond keep? Where are they from? And why is this all happening now? Only the Time Master knows. Jeff Johns is going to set the table very nicely, lock it up. This thing is absolutely going to be worth $4. DC Comics are not drilling you on this one. They're only charging $4 for what I consider a premium project that I think a lot of people are excited for. Hopefully this one cracks the top five or perhaps tops the charts in November 2022 and sends a signal loud and clear to DC Comics. We want quality when it comes to our comic books. Stargirl, The Lost Children, number one, Jeff Johns, Todd Knock. I know a lot of people like Stargirl. I guess the TV show is pretty good. I personally never checked it out. She's just not my favorite character. It's not something I really like. So I'll probably check it out just to support it. But it's not something I'm super interested in. But if you're a Jeff John Stargirl fan, hey, you get a little miniseries out of it too. So that's exciting. Blue Beetle graduation day number one. Josh Trujillo, Adrian Gutierrez. Just looking at this cover. I know that I don't want to read this comic book. Blue Beetle is a cool character, but this cover is so off-putting. And I've read some Josh Trujillo stuff in the past, and he's just not a very good writer. So this is something I would normally consider supporting, but I will be reading this. Wildcats, number one, Matthew Rosenberg, Steven Segovia. Man, that is a very good artist and a not-so-great writer. I haven't been particularly fond of his take on Grifter, but if you're a Grifter fan and you've been waiting for Wildcats, this is going to be the comic book for you. Waller versus Wildstorm number one. Spencer Ackerman, Evan Narcisse with Eric Battle. I'm surprised they're charging $6 since this is a 32-page comic. The only Spencer Ackerman that I know of like wrote for the Daily Beast and um, The Guardian or whatever. I'm not going to spend I'm not going to spend $6 for a writer that doesn't do comic books. I mean the idea of itself Waller versus Wildstorm is pretty good, but uh put some fucking talent on it if you want me to spend $6 on your comic book, you know what I'm saying? Wildstorm 30th anniversary special number one, Matthew Rosenberg, Brandon Choi, J. Scott Cable, Brett Booth, Ed Brisson, Jim Lee, J. Scott Cable, Brian Hitch, Brett Booth, Superman Cal Allen Return special number one, Mark Wade, Cena Grace, Alex Segura, Marv Wolfman, with Max Rayner, Dean Haspiel, Jack Herbert, and Riley Brown. Six dollars for a comic book that was Cena Grace work in it. That sounds like it's probably not worth it. The march towards Action Comics 1050 continues. My goodness, I bet it does. You think they're going to charge us $10 for that one? 
Mark Wade's been doing great stuff. I love Marv Wolfman, but man, Cedar Grace sucks, and Alex Segura is not much better. John Stewart, the Emerald Knight, number one. Jeff Thorne, Marco Santucci, never in a million years. Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths, number six. We are in the penultimate issue. War erupts as more heroes are taken at the hands of Pariah. The fate of the multiverse depends on the young heroes of the DCU as they clash with Deathstroke and the Dark Army. Can the resurrected Justice League race home to Earth Zero in time to join the fight? Even if it could mean that not everyone gets to return JLQ versus the Dark Army while the Justice League tries to save them. Of course, they'll show up in the final issue to actually save the day. Dark Crisis, the Dark Army, number one. Mark Wade, Delilah Dawson, Dennis Culver, Freddie Williams, the second on art. I like Freddie Williams. Six dollars. What's again? My goodness. Now, I'm not liking Dark Crisis enough to start buying tie-ins. Let's put it that way. Dark Crisis, War Zone, number one. I've read three Warzone issues at this point, I believe, and every one of them has been absolute dog shit. Dark Crisis, Worlds Without a Justice League, Batman number one, the most important character in the entire DC Comics universe. Who's writing this comic book? Cy Spurrier and Megan Fitzmartin. That's all you need to know about DC Comics and where they are right now. Dark Crisis, Young Justice number six, Megan Fitzmartin, Laura Braga. Deceased, War of the Undead Gods number four, Tom Taylor, Trevor Hairsign. It feels like this third chapter of deceased like the final chapter of the trilogy is going to be the best one since the original i like the the middle chapter i like the second one but it feels like this one's actually even better nothing is what the heroes of earth thought it was the shocking truth is finally revealed and the fate of all existence hangs in the balance lobo joins the fight but will the main man help or hinder the greatest heroes in the universe as they gather to fight the galactic armada of the undead i'm definitely reading that one batman versus robin number three mark wade mahmoud aswar Batman has been on a breakneck journey through the DC Universe from Wayne Manor to the House of Secrets and back again. Obviously, this is the follow-up to uh, the very first story arc in Batman Superman World's Finest, which is absolutely phenomenal. Probably the best story so far of 2022. I think it'll definitely come in number one. Nightwing 2022, annual number one, $6. Tom Taylor, Eduardo Pensica, Julio Ferreira. Who is heartless? Find out who the villain is behind the platinum mask and why he only collects the hearts of some victims and not others, and why he has no heart himself. And then Bitewing Year One, follow Haley on her first year with the humans, Nightwing, and Batgirl. I think most people will be buying this for the uh, the Bitewing story, to be completely honest. I'll probably check it out. I, it feels like I'm pot committed to Tom Taylor's Nightwing at this point, even though I'm going to have a video about that in the coming days, and I'm not happy. Let's just put it that way. Batgirls 2022 annual number one, Becky Cloonan, Michael Conrad. How could you make this worse by adding Robbie? I like to show people my butthole, Rodriguez. Detective Comics 2022 annual number one, Ram B. Christopher Mitten. As a werewolf, Gail has lived through many generations, so we've visited Gotham Land before. I have not read the second issue of Detective Comics yet. It's probably going to happen tomorrow, but nice to know that these guys are werewolves. I was unaware. Newbie in the Justice League, special number one, Becky Cluden, Michael Conrad, Stephanie Williams, enough said. Wonder Woman, 793, Becky Cluden, Michael Conrad, Jordi Belair, Emanuela Lupacito, and Paulina Gunicho. DC's Grifter got run over by a reindeer number one. Uh, I don't read any of this stuff. They always charge outlandish prices. This is going to be 10 bucks. Uh, if this is your thing, I hope you enjoy it. There are... Uh, it's, Skylar Partridge and Dustin Wynn are good. And Fico Osio. So there's actually good, there's really good artists on those books, but the writers are terrible. Action Comics 1049, Philip Kennedy Johnson, Mike Perkins on art. Well, that'd be kind of nice. I guess now that they're not on War World, they don't need uh, Ricardo Federici anymore. Uh, his art probably doesn't really fit a mainline Superman comic book anyway. Kal-El Returns Part 5. The epic crossover between Action and Superman Son of Kal-El continues. We're only one month away from the mammoth Action Comics 1050, and being bent over for another $10. My goodness. Batgirls, number 12, Becky Cluded, Michael Conrad, and Neil Googe. Batman Nightwatch, number three, Jay Torres, Eric Owen. Hey, if you're going to put out $3 comic books, I say thank you very much. This looks like it's probably kid-friendly, but these days my kid just, uh, he's just stuck on Dogman comics and stuff like that. DC Comics, I guess, lost him, unfortunately. I wish we could share it together. Batman Incorporated number two, Ed Brisson, John Timms, Batman E continue to investigate the death of Ghostmaker and Batman's mentors. Each new lead only begs more questions and threatens to unearth a shocking secret buried deep in Ghostmaker's past, a secret that refuses to die. Well, that's probably him and Bruce Wayne having sex or whatever, but I don't think Ghostmaker's dead. Let's put it that way. Batman The Fortress number seven, Gary Whitted, Derek Robertson. 
this is probably the biggest failure in modern Batman history. A Batman comic book starring Bruce Wayne that's like outside the top 150. Absolute insanity. But this thing is absolutely putrid and deserves the ridicule and scored as being the least successful Bruce Wayne-led comic book in, in like a decade. Just insane. Batman Superman World's Finest, number nine, the best comic book that you can buy on the market today. Mark Wade, Dan Mora, Batman and Superman are on a quest to train the mysterious new hero, Boy Thunder. But what's that in the dark? A faint noise? Sounds like a laugh. Uh-oh. The Joker is here, and he's got his own plans for a super-powered sidekick. Someone hide all the crowbars. Quick. Batman Gotham Knights, Gilded City, number two, Evan Narcisse, Abel on Art. I assume that this has something to do with the video game, so I'm not going to read it. Batman The Audio Adventures number three. I have no idea why this is a comic book. Batman Urban Legends 21, Michael Cho, Anthony Falco, Joey Esposito, Dennis Culver, and Julio Antle. And they want to charge you $8 for that comic book. My goodness. Black Adam number six, Christopher Priest, Rafa Sandoval. Batman has had enough of Black Adam. My bad, there was one more Batman comic I did not include in DC Comics by the Numbers. Angered over Bruce Wayne's financing of a democracy movement in his country. Theo Teth Adam confronts Wade. Well, he doesn't have money anymore. Is this thing not in continuity? My goodness. Get with the program, Christopher Priest. He's not even a millionaire anymore. Catwoman, 49. Tinny Howard, Nico Leo. Dark Knights of Steel, number eight. Tom Taylor, Yasmin Putri. I don't think we've had one of these issues in a very long time. Someone actually asked me about it, and I was like, I have no idea. But apparently it's back, and it's heading towards the final four issues. The battle between the three kingdoms has begun in brutal fashion. And to call the opening salvo anything less than shocking is an understatement. We're going to get the Red Wedding finally in DC Comics. That's something George R.R. Martin actually pitched before Dan Didio became in charge of DC Comics. And they ended up like redoing it and ended up not working. But it sounds like it's going to happen here. Dark Knights of Steel, DC Comics characters attempting to do Game of Thrones type stories. DC Horror presents Sergeant Rock versus the Army of Dead number three, Bruce Campbell, Eduardo Rizzo. DC vs. Vampires, number 11, Matthew Rosenberg, James Tynan with Otto Schmidt. Humanity's final battle against King Nightwing and his vampire armies have seemingly failed on all three fronts. Who lives? Who dies? As all hope is extinguished, will the surviving heroes be able to stop the extinction of the human race? DC vs. Vampires, All Out War, number 5, Matthew Rosenberg, Alex Pactadil. DC Mech, number 5, Kenny Porter, Baldemar Rivas. I understand people like this comic book, but I still don't know why they're making it. And apparently retailers had the same question because I think it debuted at like number 190, which is even worse than, than uh, Child of the Amazons. That's shocking. Deathstroke Inc. number 15, Ed Briss and Dexter Soy. I would probably read this because I do like Dexter Soy as an artist quite a bit. I like Ed Brisson as a writer for the most part, but I, I'm done with year one stories. I'm never going to support another year one story from DC Comics. Find a new gimmick. Detective Comics 1066. Ray and B. Ivan Reese. I've been enjoying this. I've heard the second issue is better than the first one. And I'll definitely have read it by tomorrow when this actually goes up. But I haven't read the second issue yet. But issue number one really set a nice foundation for what Ray and B is doing. Babel's 157. Bill Willingham. Mark Buckingham. This was supposed to be an ongoing, but now it's a mini series. And unfortunately, the sales just aren't there. I was hoping this thing would, uh, you know, hit like gangbusters, but. That was not to be the case for DC Comics, and we're probably not going to get any more Fable stories in the future, unfortunately. GCPD, The Blue Wall number 2, John Ridley, Stefano Raphael. You couldn't pay me to read a John Ridley book about cops. Gotham City, Year 1, number 2, Tom King, Phil Hester. I don't read Tom King or Year 1 stories. Harley Quinn, 24, Stephanie Phillips, Mateo Lolly. Harley Quinn, the animated series, Legion of Bats number 2, T. Franklin, Shea Beagle. I think the Harley Quinn animated series has been canceled, but they're still putting out this horrific T. Franklin comic book. I don't know how she got a sequel. The first one, Eat, Bang, Kill Tour, is one of the worst comic books you will ever read in your life. I'm definitely going to read this just because I know I can make a video out of it because it's going to be an absolute shit show. T. Franklin is absolutely terrible. Should never be able to write a comic book again unless it's like creator-owned and she has to pay somebody to do it. But the fact that she's getting paid to write this comic book just tells you that the world is insane. I am Batman number 15, John Ridley, Carl Mostert. Looks like we're going to get Sinestro. And this is a Dark Crisis tie-in. Monkey Prince number 8, Gene Yang, Bernard Che. Multiversity, Teen Justice number 6, Danny Lore, Ivan Cohen, Marco Faela. If you want to see a bunch of lesbians play field hockey, this is the comic book for you. Danny Lore is 
wrapped it up for you. Nightwing 98, Tom Taylor, Danielle de something or other. Nightwing meets Nightmite. That's right, the meddling Nightmite booped himself into the fifth dimension. After reading Seven Secrets, he hitchhiked his way over with Danielle into our Nightwing series. Trust us, you're not going to want to miss this one. For a comic book series that hasn't done anything in a year, I don't think that you should be doing like side adventures until you finish a fucking story. Poison Ivy, number six, G. Willow Wilson, Marcio Takara. This was originally a miniseries, but it was popular enough that they're actually making it ongoing. So I guess this is a success story of sorts for DC Comics. Poison Ivy is taken to death's door and beyond as the fungal parasite she's been playing host to causes Ivy to undergo a terrific metamorphosis. Can the world's greatest villain find the strength within her to carry on? She is not the world's greatest villain. That is absolutely insane. Punchline, the Gotham game number two, Teeny Howard and her husband, Blake. Gleb Melnikoff, what a waste. That's a good artist. Static, Shadows of Dakota, number two, Vidal and Nicholas Draper Ivy. Superman, Son of Kal-El, number 17, Tom Taylor, C and Tormi. This is the uh, feel-good LGBTQ romance story disguised as a superhero comic. Well... That's certainly homoerotic. Look at old Clark Kent. Superman Space Age number three, Mark Russell, Mike Allred. $10 for a Mark Russell comic book. No, thank you. Sword of Azrael number four, Dan Waters, Niccolo. I'm not even going to try on that one. If you're a big fan of Skip and if you trust his opinion on comic books, he says you should absolutely be reading this comic book. Dan Waters is an acquired taste. He's not exactly a mainstream comic book writer, so it's nice to have a different feel and flavor within DC Comics. And if you're looking for something that feels different, definitely check out Sword of Azrael. Batman and Scooby-Doo Mysteries number two. The Flash 788, Jeremy Adams, Fernando Passerin, and Matt Ryan. This is not a Dark Crisis tie-in. When Gregory Wolf wins the mayorship of Central City, he implements a radical agenda to instill order, including deputizing the rogues to enforce the law and ridding the city of its well-known vigilante, The Flash. What an original story. Flash, the fastest man alive, number three, Kenny Porter, Jason Howard. This is basically like The Flash from the movie, you know, it's kind of starring Ezra Miller. I'm surprised they're still putting it out, but I guess if they already paid for it, you might as well. This is not how David Zasloff would do it. You know what I'm saying? He just would have cut that bad boy out. The Human Target number nine, Tom King, Greg Smallwood. What character can Tom King destroy next? It looks like Batman, but he's already destroyed Batman. It's technically a very well done comic book, but my goodness, it's got so much Tom King on it. This could actually be something that people would read in 20 years if he could just like get out of his own way. It's actually pretty good. The Joker, the man who stopped laughing, number two, Matthew Rosenberg, Carmine Diagimenico. The new champion of Shazam, number four, Josie Campbell, Evan Doc Shaner. Nice House on the Lake, number 12, James Tynan, Alvaro Martinez, Bueno. The cataclysmic conclusion of the Iser award-winning horror hit is here at last. And to say anything more would ruin the only finale more shocking than the end of the world itself. No one is safe, and everything can change in an instant. I almost guarantee you'll get a sequel about this. Tim Drake, Robin number three, Megan Fitzmartin, Riley Rosmo. This immediately goes to the top of the heap as far as the worst comic book in the industry. There's a damn good chance I'll be covering every single one of these issues. Megan Fitzmartin is an absolute train wreck. Riley Rosmo is a terrible artist. Titans United, Blood Pack number three, Kevin Scott, Lucas Meyer. I'll probably check this one out. The first one was actually pretty good. Like, it wasn't mind-blowing, but by DC Comics' current standards, it was definitely worth checking out. Young Justice Targets, number five, Greg Weissman, Christopher Jones. That does it for my DC Comics November 2022 solicitations video. Very excited about Jeff Johns coming back hot and heavy to DC Comics. Got a JSA ongoing. We got a couple of miniseries as well. Mark Silvestri's Batman series finally being released. Yes, please. Mark Wade's Batman vs. Robin Batman, Superman, World's Finest have been excellent. I'm I'm hoping The Flash gets back to being a really good comic book, getting out of these Dark Crisis tie-ins, but we'll see what happens. I'm very, very cynical about what the Superman returning story is going to end up being. They're putting some really untalented people on there. They're putting terrible creators on the Dark Crisis tie-ins and whatnot. So, I don't know. You got to pick your spots for your DC Comics fan. That's what I'm doing, and I'm definitely excited. About the big news we got about Mark Silvestri and Jeff Johns. If you want more news, more coverage of that, I actually did a full video on both of these. Definitely check this out for more news on something exciting. If you're on a mobile device, there's a link in the video description.